Hey, it's Joe Gleisman, Automator, and today we're going to walk through what we've been automating lately. I haven't done this video in a couple weeks. I've been uh, working on my pond before the rains hit, but they hit now, so I'm off the tractor and back to work on Sundays. Uh, let's go ahead and share my screen. Before I jump into the, um, this one probably wouldn't show up, or at least the, the specifics wouldn't. During the hero calls, I use OBS like I'm doing now, and every once in a while, I was just like, hey, Joe, your screen shared, and I realized it's because I have a hotkey for changing my scenes, but when I'm running Zoom, I never want to be you changing my scenes. Like, I don't record OBS over Zoom. So I added a, a hot if here. This is still my, my initial auto hotkey script. It's my main one, which is thousands, like three, 4,000 lines long. So I haven't converted it to V2. But it, um, I look to see if Zoom exists, if the window exists. And then it's numpad 0, numpad 1. So I'm just killing them uh, and, and just ending the hot if there. So... That's cool. It's a little thing I just added to my main one. Also, by the way, here is another good example of a hot if uh, with Sight. If Sight is active and I hit Alt-R, um, it checks the path, and if it's in the path, it ends in HTML, it actually runs it, um, which opens it in my browser, because right now on HTML, I have it, when I double-click it, it opens it in Sight. So, um, just another example of how I can, I use Alt-R in Sight to run, or otherwise it sends F5, so that will launch it, um, so I use Alt-R to run in almost any editor I use. I just remap that Alt-R, depending on the editor I'm in, to run my script. So let's just get started. Um, let me change the DPI. Bump up the DPI. It won't be that obvious in this because there's... Oh, a tiny... And I, and I was, by the way, I was playing with Cursor this morning. Um, I'd seen some videos on it, and then Ryan Wells mentioned it to me. And what I didn't realize when I was watching the videos, I didn't hear anyone mention that you can borrow your VS Code extensions. So I installed Cursor and was playing with it and I brought in my um, V1 and V2 auto hotkey extensions from VS Code and started programming right away. And I, I haven't adapted VS Code, or I should say adopted VS Code yet, but it um, I'll tell you, I was pretty impressed with Cursor. It was uh, making it easy for me to interact. Now, the guys have Copilot in VS Code. It's just VS Code is a behemoth of an editor. And I was able to easily figure out uh, Cursor without even really watching any videos on the actual how to use it. Uh, it has a little tutorial that you start off with, and um, I walked through that. But pre pretty cool pretty cool tool. We'll probably make a video documenting how to use it uh, another time. But now let me uh, use Prompt Assistant here to launch our recently modified files. Now, this is only going to go back a week. I should go back a month because it's been at least three weeks, I think, since I've made one of these videos. But we won't worry about it. So we've worked on 75 files. Usually at the top, I think it sorts it alphabetically. So these are client work. Um, this life's a full... So uh, Blake or, or um, and Stephanie, they're, they're the ones I talk about a lot in the newsletter. And they wanted us to help automate their reporting. Now, this is, you know, I, I actually, when I was, I was on the tractor yesterday finishing up work, and I had this big... I was listening to a thing, and... and it's a great subject I'm going to use for my uh, one of the upcoming newsletters of why we love crappy software is the headline, right? And it's really why we love old crappy software because older software, um, now this tool, it didn't have all, it had some Win32 controls, which are great to automate with AutoHotKey, but the ones we were trying to rip out were not Win32 controls. And we tried using UIA and ACC and we couldn't get to them. So after it runs, it displays the values in a report, unfortunately, there's no way to programmatically get those. It doesn't export them. And as a matter of fact, if you close that window, move to the window and come back, the scores are gone, right? So it's, and it's an older program. And so Stephanie wants us to do this big project for her, helping her tie in the reporting values, looking them up and, and helping provide more information for their users. And we were looking at using OCR, but I really hate using OCR or anything to do with images stuff because it just, you know, even with AI doing it, it was working really well. We, we have a AI OCR tool that we're playing. We haven't released it yet, but it, it's built in and it, 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 re, it was getting them. But again, if we can programmatically get those values, it's a game changer because we don't have to worry about is it accurate or not. So we were testing with Russell, who's he's on our hero calls a lot, and uh, he was using the automator inspector tool and ultimate spy we would try those different methods and then we're like okay we can't and i think isaiah said well let's jump over to like looking in memory and i'm like well ho hold on um why don't we uh use process monitor to 
run the report and look at process monitor and see if we can figure out if it's saving that information somewhere into a file even though it doesn't tell us it's in a file and lo and behold um it was actually creating this is how old the program is it was creating xls excel files right that had after we looked at them for a couple minutes we decide we just figured out how they're actually structured and the values are perfectly there so now we're going to be able to automate getting that data dumping it into a report for their clients what they've never been able to do stephanie was telling me they have to write down what they see and then go look at it later but there's no they then they would have to type it into a spreadsheet if they wanted it like crazy annoying um this is the great part if you're really lazy this is where being lazy really helps right that's how lazy i am is i will find a way to automate that so I, can't, I haven't reported it to her yet, but Isaiah, is, he's working today. We're going to do a little more work to actually have a working example to show her, but it's going to be a total game changer for our clients. It's going to allow her to differentiate herself from all the other people and have a new thing to sell her clients, which is just, it's, it's really cool. So I'm so glad we're working on this project. Um, and we also found a lot of other things that have, I think it was a, ABS data file. They're, it's like a database, but apparently it's similar to an XLS Excel file. Um, so we're probably going to also be able to help automate their tool because we can look at some of the database stuff and actually extract information from it. So that was a, a huge find yesterday. I was I was so stoked. When we, I said, let's spend an hour just kind of looking at it and bam. So, um, all right. Now, Danny, he's a, one of our radiologists and um, I was actually talking with him and, and the other day. He said, because I don't sit in on all the calls with, with him because they're, her, him and Isaiah are going to town automating stuff and it's just all programming and i'm like you know i got other work to do right so i hadn't caught up with danny in a while and danny's like joe the, the stuff that we're writing he's like i really see how other people are going to be able to use because we're incorporating ai into his tool and using ai to help figure out how it fits into his report so we're adjusting it but he said the stuff that we're doing now it's really working really well so um that's really cool um awesome to hear oh and then let's see where is it here so oh so we got a couple more um josh is like a day trader and we automated a tool for him where it goes and pulls the ticker values the current value prices and stuff in and in probably a dozen other metrics for over two thousand tickers before he had to get 200 at a time and he was manually doing it and copying and pasting it was honestly a nightmare so we've automated you hit the button it goes and rips it all and dumps it into excel perfectly in in a couple seconds instead of probably 30 minutes i would guess you maybe even longer what it would take him to do this so very very cool but this next one michael um michael reached out to us and he's like an insurance not adjuster but he goes out on the storms and documents all the stuff and, and submits the claims and he was describing how him and other people who are have these issues are really having a painful time so he has some basic hot strings and he he just doesn't know how to hotkey so he's like hey can you give me um, a little time to help me learn how to do this and help build it better and so we saw what he was doing but we're like we have other tools like auto suggester and prompt assistant both of which would allow you to not even have to use hot strings because if you have them in your list you can start typing the auto suggester it'll pre-populate there and you can hit enter and it'll take it or of course the prompt assistant you can add your hot strings or hot keys to trigger the stuff but you don't have to learn how to program without a hot key right it's all in the gui and then you have the gui in case you can't remember it so but we were talking more with him and we were showing him some of the stuff we're doing with ai and how because he looks at pictures and then he has to uh mention what he sees i'm like we can submit that to ai and get a description for you and then of course you can tweak it right but he he was really we he was busy so we we spent an hour hour and a half with the client but i i think there's going to be some really great tools we're going to build for those type of people um, which we'll, we'll probably build as a subscription model because they'll have to access ai tools but um, very very cool looking forward to that uh, doo -doo -doo -doo. so in our Automator, let me, um, boy, where is, I don't know if I actually have that in my log. So, um, the simplest by, we had an interesting question. Someone wrote me uh, on um, a YouTube video, simplest by, and, so, and they, they watched our video on how to automate older programs, as I mentioned before, that are Win32 controls and how easy it is, right? Um, and, and he said, that's great, but how do I know if it's a Win32 control? And I'm like, 
you know, it's a valid question. If you're new to programming and stuff, it's not obvious. So what we did was I said, hey, let's... Ooh, that, oh, the DPI. That's funny. I'll have to let Irfan know it's uh, it's not rendering properly with the DPI. But um, it, this should still work. So, yeah. So, see... This now in Simple Spy and in our Ultimate Spy and our Automator Spy, it tells you it's not a Win32 control. But if we bring up, like, let's say, I think this version of Notepad. I use the older version of Notepad. If I drag it in here, it doesn't give you that error, right? And it shows you. But also see these, when you drag this onto a non-Win32 control, we blank those out. So you don't, because in the normal AutoHotKey Win Spy, it still shows the stuff. Let me let me um, just launch one. If you double clip your script icon, oops, sorry, you don't double click it. You right click it. Here we go. So you guys are probably all familiar with this spy tool. When you are over something, it still shows you the um, this information and somewhere here we go. These information things, even though they may or may not be Win32 controls, and so it's very confusing if you're not familiar with it. Of like, hey, is that a Win32 control? You want to think it is, right? Um, or this, but uh, you don't know for certain, right? And it takes some some practice to understand is that a Win32 control? So our tool, um, when we do this, it it just doesn't even show it, and it warns you, right? So I think that's really cool. Yeah, I'll need to get that DPI uh, adjusted for DPI. That was a really nice idea and concept. We also, by the way, let me um bring up our our this is our automator spy this also has like i said it because it doesn't matter um it does it could be anywhere where's my right control uh maybe here here we mentioned it down here whether it's a 132 control or not so i think that see that one is a 132 control but um, because this tool isn't just for win 32 controls and those controls we don't make it red because it may or may not be what you're looking for right anyway um, we were, during the hero call, we were discussing, I think it was the do not disturb stuff, which we were building a script on it. And interesting enough, they were popping up notifications and it was some tool, but it couldn't, auto hotkey was incorrectly getting the titles. And then Isaiah said, well, did you actually literally copy the text from the tool? Because sometimes in here there's hidden characters. There's like a, 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 a space that really isn't a space or an A that's a, actually a, a, a Unicode character. And if you hand type it, we make a mistake. So I said, hey, you know how VS Code, if you ever copy from he, from the here and paste it into VS Code, if it is one of those Unicode characters, it will kind of signify it to you, right? Let you know that's a bad character. So I said, why don't we update our tool, this Windows Spy, that should let you know. So we're gonna make this a rich text edit and then instead it's the plain text one. And when there's a bad character here, a character that, you you know, it looks like a space, but it's not, so to speak, or looks like an, an E, but it's not an E, it will change the color of it to let you know, hey, you better go copy that and paste it. Don't try to type it, right? Unless you are have the, you know, Europe keyboard or something, right? So that's going to be a really nice ad that when we get that done. Um, here's one of the Do Not Disturb examples. We were trying a lot of different approaches. I want, right now, the tool we have, um, at least as of the other day, it would pop open the Do Not Disturb window, and I don't want, I want a hotkey that I hit it and just toggle the Do Not Disturbs on or off. I don't want to see the screen, right? So we're trying to solve that. Uh, so um, I don't think we have that one yet. Um, OS version, I don't know what I was doing here. Just other, Oh, that was funny. I do remember now. Irfan and I were doing something and we were building a check because some of our registry hacks that we're developing depend on Windows 11 or Windows 10. And we were looking at the Windows version of what version you're running. And if I, let's see, can I double click this or is that? Yeah. So I'm running Windows 11, but it it actually is listed as 10.0.2. It's not an auto hockey bug. That's literally the version, which is insane to me. So there is a cutoff point of like, and, and I forget what it is, but we, we do know where that point is of that means it's 10 and that means it's 11. But what? Like Microsoft, get your act together. Um, sorry, this is ludicrous. All right, so our AI transcribe tool. Oh, I can't wait. This one's really close to being released, um, but it's it's really awesome. That it uh, uh, allows you to take a video, drag it in, and it will take the 
video file or audio file, submit it to, uh, actually we're using, we're not using Whisper, we were using Whisper initially, but it was having some problems, so we found a new one called Assembly AI, I think, and it drags it in there, and it will transcribe the video, and then return it back into our player, and then you can search for people and stuff, or, or you assign the speakers, um, it gives you the sentiment and everything, you can extract video clips or audio clips, it's just, it's a really, really cool tool, we're almost done with it, but I can't wait to get that one, um, th this one here, out. FFmpeg record? I don't know. I guess it's because we use FFmpeg in these tools to record. So that's what's going on there. And da, 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 script object. Yeah, this is the um, an OCR one. So for another client, which actually, oh, I guess, no, that should have been up there. Maybe I missed it. But um, Kevin is an accountant. He's a lawyer and accountant, I think. He's a forensic accountant and he often testifies. Anyway, he has a PDF file that have cases from other um, people and he, we're trying to see who who has similar needs. And so he was trying to extract, use, um, extract the text from it, but they're pictures. And so it was coming out crappy and he's like, Joe, do you have any, you know, any, can you do this any better? And so I said, well, let me see the file. And so I tried a couple approaches and then I pushed it into Claude and Claude actually was doing an amazing job of doing OCR on it itself. And Unfortunately, it was giving us like 20, 30 rows at a time, and it was a 70-something page document. And so even though I have a paid subscription to Claude, um, I w we'd use it for like 20 minutes extracting text from it. We'd have to get hit continue, like hit continue, it'd give us, let's say, 30 rows, and then we would transfer that to Excel, and then we'd hit type continue again. And um, unfortunately, after, let's say, like 10 minutes, 10, 15 minutes of that, it would also say, okay, you're out of, you have to wait until another three or four hours from now, right? So it was annoying, but the client wasn't in a hurry, and we had already started, and I'm like, you know what, that's fine. We'll just come back to it. Well, at some point, we ran out of the tokens. It got to, to be too many, and we had to stop. And I said, okay, I know we have this AI with ChatGPT that uses OCR. Let's give that a try. So I launched the tool, and um, sure enough, it worked amazing. The only thing was the tool at the time, and let's see this one, if I could just launch. I know there's, I think there's, I think it's control to click that to, to launch it. Yeah. So we'll try that. And it, it sent that off to ChatGPT, returns it back, did OCR, it looks you know, pretty darn good. Um, at the time, this tool was actually, we had written parts of it for Danny, the radiologist, but it was embedding it into his report. So. I extracted all of that, and then I said, hey, when there's delimiters, use tabs, and so this probably has tabs in here instead of spaces, because I wanted to paste it into Excel. So this tool I borrowed very quickly to finish that document, and I just um, did that, cranked through it in no time. It was really cool. So that's another one, um, which by the way, this one, when I was looking at the code in, in Isaiah, it, it's not a big deal, but he had saved him the images as JPEGs, in my experience, when you're doing stuff from a screen, I think GIFs do a really good job of keeping the quality and not, and compressing the the image. Um, let me know if you guys think differently, but I think GIFs are, are really good at that. But um, And I don't think it matters for, it, it's just, you know, who knows, right? So we might change that um, extension. We're also gonna, we gotta finish developing and add some debugging and stuff before we share that. Uh, and some of our, our AI tools, I think we're gonna change them to be subscriptions. And then we will, you know, let's say it's, I'm making up a number, nine bucks a month or whatever, but we'll take care of all the token stuff and everything too, so it's just easier for people to just use the tools and not have to, to worry about it, right? So um, hopefully the math works where we, we don't end up um, having to, to end up losing money in the deal. But uh, let's see, GUI, OCR, old, yeah, we just moved some stuff around, talk to AI. Uh, this one, it, it, the client, someone, you know, bought it for, I think it's a dollar, it's, um, and was saying they were trying to compile it and it was having problems. And it was really an interesting issue, which we haven't, I need to write back and say, you know, we've understood the issue, now we're trying to fix it. But it um, it had to do with accessing a DLL file. And I think Irfan finally, Irfan was talking to Isaiah, Isaiah understood it and was explaining it to him. And I, I think we're finally getting close, but I don't think it's updated yet on the download. But it was, a, and I can't wait to talk about it in the hero group of, how and why it was happening because it, it's a it's a gotcha like really big surprise um, by the way 
this if you can see how wide my scroll bars are which i love but on windows 11 they're narrow until you move your mouse over and even then they're not see how it still expands a little bit normally they're very narrow and uh and i don't know just that i'm older or what but that just drives me batty you don't really gain a lot of space by what they're doing um, and it just makes it hard to get your hand over the mouse so um, we have a, a script that does that uh, record in chat i don't know what that is record in chat maybe that's just a subscript but um yeah, I'm not sure what that is. Transcribe media. I think we talked about that. Um, resize GUI. So we updated transcribe media, uh, I think, to instead of when you're exporting. Yeah, when you ask to see so the summarize it, instead of putting a notification, which our notify class is beautiful, but for long strips of text, it goes off the screen and it's really wide. So I had it earthy and convert it to using the resizable GUI so it shows it more in a, in a GUI which is easy to drag and, and, and expand if you care to. Yeah, we have a great, um, that's a great download for just creating a simple resizable edit field. Um, more stuff with FFmpeg, filters, preferences. We've been releasing some other paid tools but our FFmpeg tools like the video compression, uh, effortless video reducer, and our quick raw edit, both are just game changers. If you're editing, working with videos, they're phenomenal. And we have a couple more that we'll be releasing soon, but they're, they're really, really cool. I highly recommend you guys check out the videos. And um, I think they're 9.99 or somewhere on there. Um, this MP3 Ripper, that was another one based off of FFmpeg, that it goes and you drag in a video and it just rips out the audio file um, for you into MP3 format and uh, you can change the different bitness of the mp3 file you want but it's super fast connie um bought it he's a hero member but he bought it and uh he i forget the stats he told me um but he's like he went through a lot of videos ripped them out it's so insanely fast because it doesn't re-edit the video the audio file uh maybe if you change a bitness it has to but if you leave the bitness um no because we don't have a, a way to we should add that to the list though to keep the bitness the same as what it is in the video, and then it would just extract it like instantly. Um, but that's currently not an option in there from from memory. But it uh, it's a really really cool tool, and that one's like five ninety nine. I think it's a cheap it's a cheap one. Um, this concatenator one, Rizwan is working on an Urdu version of our auto hotkey courses, and. He, uh, apparently he did a video and he, he had it broken apart. He wanted to combine them. And he's like, do we have something like that? And I'm like, we do. It's a V1. You can see clearly here it's in the V1 folder, right? But it allows you to say, hey, take this video and this video. It depends. Um, and just append them together. And it's done like that. Um, as long as the two videos are in the same dimensions, it works really great. And, it, and it's super easy. You know, but it's, it's a nice, quick, easy way. This file fixer. Um, I think we made the download, but I haven't made a video on it yet. When you download files from some servers, um, usually, you know, big companies like LinkedIn and SurveyGizmo and, and, uh, and, and even Facebook and stuff and extract data, sometimes they don't add the byte order mark, the, the bomb. Um, and you end up getting weird looking text. And Windows so often expects the bomb, but not always, but it often does. And when you try to, to open your file, you'll get some weirdness. I don't know how to describe it other than in the video, which you'll see that I'll, I'll show. It's on the thumbnail, too. You can see it. There's just, you know, especially if you have Unicode characters, it will be weird. And you can tell something went wrong in the encoding or something. And often by adding the, the bomb, the byte order mark, it will fix it. So we wrote a very simple script that just, you just drag your file on it and the second later, no matter how the size, it just adds it to it real quickly. And it's very, very cool, um, very fast. And boy, for a lot of people, I said, actually, I think we actually charged, we, we raised the price because I said, not many people are going to want this tool, but when you do want it, it's a game changer, right? So maybe it was like $7.99. Um, I forget the price, but... Yeah, very, very cool script. I'm so glad we had finally released it. I finally, I learned it, and then I was manually doing it, uh, but I want to make a tool that was easy to share with people so they can use it. The FlexiFinder, um, that's a great tool for searching. Let's see if it's actually, yeah. So I um, I was just updating it to allow, because I want it to use the caps lock and S key. So I just added that to my script, but it, uh, it will allow you to search multiple sites at one time, you predefine the sites you want to use and then hit a hotkey and, and you can search and use Google or 
or we have two other search tools. You can decide also like, oh, I have a list of 10 sites, but I only want these three or four by the default, but you can easily add one, right? So it's a, it's a really cool search tool. I use it all the time. Um, this right we did during the hero call, um, Irfan was demonstrating. We had a button like let's, oh, I don't have any buttons on here, but pretend there's a button here. You could, you know, you can left click it and that'll trigger an event, but, but there was no like right click or middle click. So during the hero call, Irfan was explaining how to do those things and how to handle them. Uh, maybe you can make it out here so you don't have to be in the hero call. But yeah, it was a really cool little lesson because we it allowed us to repurpose a button in our tool and not have to have an additional button, which just because we didn't have room for another button and I don't want to race to a whole new row. Um, I didn't want a congested GUI. So it was a nice, easy way to add a, an option. I don't know why there's no, I'm really surprised that Luxcoach didn't add a, you know, like a middle click and a right click. Uh, option, but yeah, there's no there's no events for those, so yeah, you have to do it and figure it out yourself. Uh, trigger example, Irfan's working on our trigger class, which boy, we keep adding to it, but at some point we were talking about this in the hero call of the whole hats and deciding on what features get into V1 versus, you know, when you release the, the first version of your script, you know, the uh, versus keep adding new functionality, and I think we gotta just kind of shut it off and share it because it's, it's a really cool ability to add hot very quickly add a hot key preference or a hot string preference i think we have now also um, and you can have any files and recently we added where your you can make it a password and easily switch between a pass but i don't think that's in our preference um, in our trigger event class but yeah um, let's see triggers script object search place in word oh this is just my tool that I um I realized uh, I use this for the newsletter and it's a Word doc that I paste into somewhere where I converted to HTML. Well, when it's once it converts to HTML, I I search for certain things that I have there as little temp placeholders and it replaces them with the the banners and and other things. Right, so it was a cool thing. I remember I realized there was something else I could add to it. Um, I forget what it was. Let's see. This by the way, this tool that's using this. Scintilla control is so cool to be able to see that. Oh, um, newsletter thumb, that's what it was, is now this, the new little image gets put into the newsletter automatically for me. So I just put that, um, I put whatever this um, thing is looking for, um, at, and then it just finds it and replaces it. So I don't have to manually do that every time because that's what I would do. And I'm like, why am I doing this every time? So we're also up making some tweaks. This is another one of those registry hacks I was mentioning. It will, by default, Windows 11, when you go into the search, when you come here and you start typing, it will search the internet. <clears throat> and you can use this tool to say, only, only look locally, right? And there's two, there's one, I think, for here and one that changes this or something like that. So we're, um, we're taking that, we're changing, we can change the system tray icon size, but I forget why, Irfan's, I don't think it was changing the size of them, but on mine it was, the, the, the system tray icon, the icons in your taskbar, excuse me. So um, I'm not sure if we'll share that one, unless you're using you know a certain tool, it may not work. This compact mode was great when you open Explorer. Let me show you, if I open Explorer, um, my my stuff is very close together and that was a preference that you can change there is a way using the gui but it's kind of hidden maybe some of these are review show yeah here so you can go here um, and then it'll undo it but our tool just turns it on um, and you don't have to so we can just tell people just run this right um, that'll be like a dollar right but it's it's really just for people who don't want to try to figure that out Simple Spy, I mentioned that already. We, we updated that one. The Automated Resource Finder, that is a really cool tool which um, allows you, again, to find not not just resources from the automator, it also searches the V1 and V2 help files um, and all of our, it brings in all of our YouTube videos as well as our downloadable scripts. We added, we tried to add whether it's a V1 or V2 and so now this tool, can I double click it? There we go. That it'll go and grab the latest file but you can say oh i'm looking for a download that's a v1 script or a v2 script or it's an executable right and so that although we know i know we have more than those but they're, it just depends if they're tagged right 
So it, it takes us time, but we're, we're getting there. We're updating all the stuff, but now at least there's an easy way to filter on it. And the other thing I realized was, let's say you're looking for um, controls, but you don't know you're supposed to type control. You think of it as class NN, right? Well, what if I typed here class NN, and you're like, well, there is no class NN. But you know what? AI would be smart enough to figure out that when I type class and M, hey, you know what? He's probably looking for controls and then show it. So I think we're going to add to like this tool and some other tools an AI ability to search with a not just fuzzy. It's it's more about the concept and the idea as opposed to the actual string of text. So think of it as like synonyms or something right for it. So I think that's really cool. Um, I guess we could manually fake that by having a list of synonyms for a lot of our keywords, but um, whew, that's a lot to figure out. The, the The benefit though would be if we did that is we wouldn't have to connect to an AI to do the search. So still might be worth doing to use AI to come up with synonyms for our common things that, that people look for and then having that list and that way we don't have to connect to an AI. Um, so that might be a workaround for that without having to connect to an AI. Our discovery tool, discovery tool, and the ultimate spy. This is the Automer spy. Um, both got updated with that ability to flag the 132 controls. Um, toggle. This is the one I mentioned earlier. We're updating it, so it will toggle the do not disturb. Toggle between monitors. Um, I think I gotta tell them there's a slight bug in this one. I use it all the time, but when it's on the third monitor, not the two you're toggling between, it acts a little weird, and sometimes Zoom also acts a little weird with it. Uh, here's the ultimate spy, which I mentioned. The, those are great tools. By the way, we're we're gonna raise the price on that soon to a lot. So if you want it, it's a good time to get it. Uh, and yeah, that's about it. So hope you enjoyed that. Uh, if you want to learn more about Auto Hotkey, we have great courses. All of our courses come with a 200% money back. Or you know, really, I'm serious. Join the Hero Group. It's I guarantee you, if you attend a couple calls, you'll understand the value, right? Because you get to learn live and get to ask questions from experts and or just watch the videos after if the timing doesn't work for you but uh, not only that but you get 25 percent off of anything you purchase from us or if you do any consulting work uh, with us so thanks for watching have a great day like the video it really helps me out cheers